One of the things about compost is they often outperform um, rolled mats because of this, as you can see in this slide, is that you get really good contact with soil with compost. Again, you're, you're terraceding it so the seed is injected into it. Um, it can also be a temporary application if you don't want to seed it. Um, but we're sealing off that top uh, surface of the soil in order to control erosion and it acts like a sponge so that material is able to absorb a lot of moisture and then slowly release it um, which really helps with uh, stormwater management as well. Um, just give you a, a, a few slides to just show what can be done in, in tough to vegetate uh, high, highly erosive uh, landscapes such as sand. So a, a sand slope that um, you know, doesn't have growing characteristics, it's, it drains very well or too well and won't hold uh, a moisture for vegetation. So this is what, you know, a typical application looks like with this product we call Eco Blanket. So it's a two inch application of compost. There's a specification for that compost and a, a particle size distribution, growing characteristics, which again are available if you're interested in them. Um, but it's blown on a surface and seeded at the same time and you can see what the results are after. So what it does is it enables, this product enables you to control erosion on that surface and uh, establish vegetation for long-term growth, okay? So a snapshot of what it looks like three months after. Um, we also use, kind of skipping to the next uh, BMP, um, <clears throat> the grow media applications um, we often see used in stormwater ponds, um, in uh, uh, bioswales, um, rain gardens, that type of thing. So I just took a snapshot out, again, out of the Filtrex manual. Again, that's available to you if you need it um, to show how this grow media could be used in uh, a filter uh, rain garden uh, type application. So all of those specs are available, standard CAD drawings, how you might use it. Uh, and again, we're available here for technical information if you need it. Um, there's what it looks like in the field. <clears throat> this is actually two best management practices. You'll see a, a sock later on. You can see around the rim of this stormwater pond and then this uh, eco blanket in the middle um, to, uh, you know, to seal off the surface of this stormwater pond and, uh, and hold moisture. Um, <clears throat> the next uh, slides are, are, are using that same growing medium in a containment system that we call a sock. This is a Filtrex product and the socks are used for uh, many different uh, um, types of applications. But here on the top you'll see a living wall which is uh, not a, a, a retaining structure as much as an erosion control um, steep slope. Uh, application. The growing medium is blown into these socks and seeded so it uh, you know just acts as a net kind of the next level if a, if a compost blanket or eco blanket won't, won't uh, uh, take the duty of that slope. Um, and then on the bottom you see a green locks engineered wall so that's actually a mechanically stabilized earth um, uh, system which is uh, a retaining system. Um, and then on the bottom, an edge saver is, is kind of using the same system in a, a stream bank reclamation type system as well. Uh, again, they all use compost as the filling agent or the growing medium. And the, the primary purpose here is to grow vegetation and control erosion. Um, digging in a little deeper to the wall system. Um, uh, this is a system that's engineered, so we work with, with uh, specifiers, geotechnical engineers, to, uh, to design and test this wall as it goes in. But again, we're using this compost uh, growing medium in the face of the wall. Okay, uh, uh, just a typical view of what it might look like when it's designed <coughs> and what it looks like when it's installed. Uh, on the same uh, other hand, uh, using compost in that uh, stream bank uh, system. A little bit different in terms of design, but again uh, uh, using the growing medium which is compost based um, seeding or plugged. Um, these, uh, these walls can be, can be built to um, stabilize the stream. And, and we get into uh, using aggregates, um, alternate filter medias or, or growing mediums depending on what engineers want to see. But the design is there in concept and can be modified or, or changed depending on what the designer or what the situation requires. Um, again, this uh, design is available in the, f in, in the design manual that we have through Filtrex uh, if you're 
interested in a little bit more. Okay, so we're going to go to, uh, so we've used uh, compost for um, erosion control and, and stormwater management. And again, you know, showing you just real quickly what it can be done and then you can take from that uh, and, and look at, at individual applications like rain gardens and that type of thing. Um, and now we're going to look at some sediment control applications uh, of, and we use a material called filter media for that. So it's, it's uh, still compost, 100% compost, but it has a different particle size distribution, a different uh, set of criteria for design uh, for use in these uh, best management practices. <laughs> And the main ones are filter sock or filter berms, two different uh, uh, products. Uh, ditch checks, which would replace straw bales or rock, rock uh, checks. Um, inlet protection, which would replace um, things like uh, uh, bags, uh, sandbags, that type of thing. Um, biofiltration ponds and systems, filter rings, um, channel sock. And again, there's a whole host of different products that are built on uh, filter media using uh, for use in sediment control. Um, this is a snapshot of one of the um, uh, test results that we get through Filtrex. So it's important that, uh, just say, important about compost, that not all compost is the same. And it really is important that you have a specification in your hand and that you're able to, as a designer or uh, as a contractor, ensure that you're getting uh, the same compost that will do what the, you know, the product has said it will do. So um, as a Filtrex agent, we have our compost tested uh, and then we can, you know, look back and say, okay, our, our compost will do this. Flow through rate is important um, with sediment control, and I'll show you in a minute what it looks like in the field, but what we're trying to do is actually filter stormwater. And so we're, we're creating a filter where water flows through it, and as it flows through it, we are um, removing sediment, uh, removing things like hydrocarbons, uh, you know, motor oil, uh, removing large solids, you might be removing um, uh, pollutants uh, that are in the water as well. So uh, it is very important that you get flow through rate and it's very important that you get, um, you know, compost filter media that's going to meet the specification. So we can provide that to you as a designer or, uh, you know, as a contractor. Uh, prior to, and it's important that whoever is supplying you uh, is able to do that. Um, a look at a few of these BMPs in the field. So on the top left, you have a, a compost filter sock that uh, is blown in on construction sites for use in sediment control. So they would replace things, as we mentioned before, like a, a silt fence or a straw bale. Um, they are tested, so we have the, the testing to back up that filter media that it's going to do what it does. They work very well, especially for use on concrete, we find, uh, because they're heavy. And so they conform very well to the surface. They don't need to be staked um, because of their weight, about 25 to 30 pounds a foot for an 18-inch sock or a 450 mil sock. Um, they don't move. So it's not like a, a light straw bale or a silt fence that has to be um, that has to be staked in order for it to stay. Uh, so a filter sock uh, on the left. Uh, using a filter sock a little bit differently, we call it a ditch check for um, in-stream work. So um, the same filter media, often a, a larger size. Filter socks come in all different sizes and all different grades of the sock material but uh, we use it for sediment control in ditches, so it would replace things like straw bales or um, rock check dams. And then on the bottom, this is an ecoberm, and an ecoberm is the same filter media. Uh, it's made with a berm builder, so a specific um, uh, piece of equipment on a blower truck that forms the berm. Uh, the advantages of the berm is uh, that it is, uh, has a very wide footprint, so it conforms very well to the ground, and it is permanent. So it can be left in a riparian area. Um, if it needs to be knocked down, you can do that with a rake after, but it can be left. There's no man-made materials. Um, there is a tackifier that is uh, injected into it to hold it together at the same time. But the design there is that, uh, or, the, or the purpose of the design is that the water will pass through it, and as it does, it will be filtered. Same with the filter sock. So 
So here's two best management practices on one site. Uh, here we have uh, eco blanket or compost blanket um, on the right side of the sock and, and then a filter sock as well. And we see this often on construction sites. We put these in for contractors um, because as you can see the sediment, the, the eco blanket works very well at, at causing sediment to slow down and deposit and then your sock is there as well to help with, with overflow. Uh, on the top uh, left corner you'll see a ditch check um, now the thing that strikes you about this of course is that there's maintenance involved uh, and in every part of the erosion sediment control industry that's one of the things that we work with our contractors on is that there's maintenance. It's working, it's, it's uh, filtering sediment so it needs to be maintained. A shot of what, uh, again, maintenance, what, what happens when you, when you put a sock in and, uh, and sediment is deposited and filtered. Um, and it's important to also note that, uh, that sock do have a lifespan, just like everything. So we work with our contractors to, uh, to make sure that they're replacing them uh, or maintaining behind them uh, in timely fashion so that they function properly. Um, showed a ditch check before but on the bottom just wanted to show a different application of inlet sock so it's using the same sock it's usually a smaller size diameter um, and it depends on the design of the the, the basin there but um, again we're trying to keep the sediment on the surface so it can be cleaned up with a flat shovel rather than allowing sediment to go down into the storm sewers um, and they have uh, they work very well in certain applications and some you, you can't drive on the surface or, or you can't have anything impeding driving on the surface so there you're limited but uh, many of the the temporary or um, you know construction sites where where it isn't open access they work very well um, filtering again the same type of idea here we're focusing more on hydrocarbons you can see the flurry uh, the slurry or the, the oil slick on the top so using uh, the compost to trap um, hydrocarbons or contaminants in the stream and, and, and be able to filter it out. So that's an overview of, of using compost for erosion sediment control. I think I touched on the things that, that Elliot wanted to today. Again, it's really important to know that there's a wealth of information available for you if you're interested in specifying or if you're interested in just knowing more about this. Um, our website, www.denbo.com, um, most of the specs are on that. Again, we do have a, a, a standard specification manual, which is like a two and a half inch binder that is available to you or uh, in digital copy as well. And if you have questions, please feel free to contact uh, Elliot or myself uh, here at the office and we're happy to um, help you with project specific or even just general information on uh, using compost for erosion and sediment control.